Hi friends, welcome to my another video. Today in this video, I will discuss about the contactor nameplate or better to say the printed detail on the contactor. But to understand the contactor nameplate detail, we have to understand first what is contactor, what are the major component of the contactor and what is the working operation of the contactor. So let's start this topic. What is contactor? Contactor is nothing but an electrical switch. But the contactor is a special kind of electrical switch as the normal electrical switch can carry current up to 5 ampere, 10 ampere, sometime till 20 amperes and 25 amperes. But the contactor is available which can carry a current up to 5000 ampere. So hope you understand what why we need contactor instead of normal switch because the contactor can carry a current of 5 till 5000 amperes also but the normal switch can carry up to 20-25 ampere of current and after that it's get melt. The another use, the another advantage of the contactor over the normal switch is that the contactor can be operated automatically by providing the control wiring to the contactor but the normal switches cannot be operated automatically. There is no provision and moreover to that contactor can be closed and open remotely by using the control wiring but the remote switch but the normal switch cannot be controlled remotely we have to go to the switch and make it on and off so this is the advantage of contractor over the normal switches contactor is like a relay but the difference between the contactor and relay is that the contactor can carry a high current but the relay is only working for the lower current application so this is only the difference between the contactor and relay but the working principle of the contractor is almost same as the relay. Contactor generally always be open and when we will give power supply to the contactor then the contact of the contactor will close and it will give power to the load. Contactor is more popular for the switching of motors. I hope you understand what is contactor. Now let us study what is the major component of the contactor. There are three major component of the contactor. First one is coil or electromagnet. Second one is enclosure and third one is contacts. The coil or electromagnet of the contactor give the driving force to the moving contact of the contactor to close with the fixed contact of the contactor. The enclosure will accommodate this coil or electromagnet, the contact itself and the other uh, parts of the contactor like the spring and other are chewed to accommodate inside the contactor. The third part is contacts. This is the most important part of the contactor because it carries the current. You will better understand the component of the contactor when I will discuss about the working principle of the contactor. So let us understand what is the working principle and how the contactor is working. For that I make the contactor internal diagram. Here when we will give the power supply to the coil then the coil will become as an electromagnet and it will pull the moving contact of the contactor towards itself. Then this all moving contacts will touches to the fixed contact of the contactor and if there will be power in uh, the incoming side due to the pulling of the moving contact it will give the power to the load side also and when we will stop to give power supply to the coil then the coil will de-energize and it will lose its electromagnetic property and due to the spring tension again the con moving contact will move to its original position so the load which is getting supply from the supply in it will break because the moving contact now no more in the contact with the fixed contact. So this is the simple principle of the contactor. Here you can see that the A1 and A2 terminal is the coil terminal and when we will give the power supply to this A1 and A2 terminal then the coil get energized and it is pulling the moving contact of the contactor to the fixed contact of the contactor in order to complete the circuit. But whenever we close the power supply then due to 
the spring tension again the moving contact restored to its original position and the contactor is open at that time when we open the contactor then we will find one spring and the coil here you can see that this coil has four terminals one terminal is a1 and another terminal is a2 and this terminal is connected with that it's also a1 terminal and this terminal is shorted with this terminal so this is also a2 terminal so they in this contactor there is two a1 terminal and two a2 terminal okay when we will give power supply to this a1 and a2 terminal then the coil get energized okay here you can see that the coil is energized by 240 50 to 60 hertz power supply some of the coil can be energized by the dc source of 24 volt 48 volt 110 volt and sometimes this same coil is energized by ac source of 24 volt 28 volt 48 volt and 110 volt and 240 volt here the spring is always give tension to the moving contact of the contactor to do not touch with the fixed contactor contact of the contactor but when we energize the coil then the moving contact is pulled by the electromagnet and it will touch the fixed contact of the contactor and when we de-energize then due to the spring tension again the moving contact will move back to its original position and the circuit will break so this is how the contactor is working i hope you understand this concept now let us back to our original topic that is the name plate detail of the contactor or the printed detail of the contactor here you can see that the first one is l1 l2 l3 this is the l1 l2 and l3 this is the power terminal for the input supply okay and this terminal are marked as 1 3 and 5 the second one which you will find in the contactor is t1 t2 and t3 t3 terminal this is the outgoing terminal of the contactor and it is marked as 2 4 and 6 the third thing which you will find on the contactor is the company name this contactor company name is Snyder Electrics which is also called brand name the fourth thing which you will find on the contactor nameplate is device short name or you can say that the model name so here the device short name and model name is LC1D okay the fifth thing which you will find on the contactor nameplate is the device name this device name is TESYS okay and the sixth thing which you will find on the contactor nameplate is the coil terminal that is A1 and A2 the seventh thing which you will find on the contactor nameplate is the ampere rating rated operational current rating of the contactor here you can see that 38 is the contactor rated operational current in some of the contactor you also find some numbers like 1 1 or 1 2 or 2 1 in same pattern what does it indicate let me explain this one the first number indicate the number of no contact and the second digit indicate the number of nc contact suppose here if it is mentioned 1 1 it means that the number of no contact is 1 in this contactor and the number of nc contact of this contactor is also 1 here you can see that there is one no terminal 13 14 is a one no terminal and 21 22 is one nc terminal so if there will be uh, written then it would be one and one some of the contactor will have three no contact and two nc contact in that time there will be a number written 32 which will indicate that there is three no contact in the contactor and two nc contact of the contactor hope you understand this one some of the important details of the contactor also available at the side of the contactor here you can see that the contactor have some important details available at the side of the contactor wall this is the detail available at the side of the contactor so let us study one by one each detail the eighth detail which is available on the contactor is utilization category ac3 here you can see that the utilization category is mentioned here AC3. What does it mean? 
the contactor is a special switch as i told you before so one type of contactor cannot be used for different types of load like there is a resistive load there is an inductive load there is a capacitive load and the operation of these loads also can be varies meaning the duty cycle of the load some loads are operational for the longer time and some load need to operate periodically means it will on for half hour and again it will be off for half hour again it will again on for half hour this is called the periodic operation and some load need to be operate on and off very frequently that is called the inching operation means that load will be on in a second and again after few seconds it will be off and again on so that operation is called inching operation based on the behavior of the load that is inductive capacitive and resistive and the duty cycle of the load which is continuous run periodic and inching the type of the contactor will differ okay here the contactor type is ac3 type now let us understand this ac3 type of contactor is useful for which type of load here you can see that the ac duty for the contactor means alternating current duty for the contactor ac1 type of contactor can be used for non inductive and slightly inductive load whose power factor is between 0.95 to 1 means this ac1 type load is generally used for the resistive load like for heaters and furnace ac2 type load is used for slippering induction motor okay and ac3 type of load is generally used for squirrel cage induction motor and ac4 type of contactor is used for squirrel cage induction motor but in that case the induction motor is in the quenching operation means the induction motor is getting on and off very frequently why there is a different type of contactor for same squirrel cage induction motor when it is a quenching type operation because when ac3 type contacts which carrying the current is not designed for the quenching operation the contactor will burn out when there will be a frequent on and off for the contactor but ac4 contactor contact is designed in such a manner that frequent on and off of the contactor will not damage the contacts of the contactor okay there are many other type of the contactor also but the most important one is ac1 ac2 ac3 and ac4 which is frequently used in the industry and commercial building apart from that some important contactors are ac6a which is used for transformer on and off ac6b which is used for capacitor bank on and off so hope i give you a overview for the type of the contactor based on its duty now let us understand the another important detail on the contactor that is the standard here you can see the standard is iec slash en 60947-41 and IEC slash EN60947 slash 5A. This is the Electro International Electro Technical Commission standard. And based on this standard, this contactor is designed and manufactured. The other detail you will find on the contactor is pole description. Here you can see that there are three poles, a power terminal. So the pole description of this contactor is three pole. If this contactor has four pole, four power terminals for input and output, then that this contactor will be called as four pole contactor. The other detail you will find on the contactor nameplate is a pole contact composition. Here you can see that this contactor have one NO terminal which is 1314 and one NC terminal which is 2122. So this contactor have a pole contact composition as 1 NO and 1 NC. If this contactor will have 2 NO and 2 NC or 2 NO and 1 NC then the contactor pole composition will be 2 NO and 1 NC. The other detail which you will find on the contactor nameplate is a rated operational voltage that is UE. Here it is mentioned as 690 volt. 
what does it mean it mean that this contactor will work till maximum voltage of 690 volt and beyond this voltage this contactor will break down and it will get damaged the other detail which we will find on the contactor nameplate is a motor power in kilowatt this is very important here you can see that at 230 volt this contactor can feed a motor of kilowatt rating of 9 and this contactor can be able to switch on and off the motor at the voltage of 400 volt and the motor capacity should be 80 maximum should be 18.5 kilowatt in same way this contactor is able to carry a motor of rating 18.5 kilowatt when the load is when the voltage is 500 volt and this contactor is able to operate a motor of rating 18.5 kilowatt when the operational voltage is given to this contactor is 690 hope you understand this one the other detail which is present on the contactor nameplate is a motor power hp here you can see that when there will be a voltage of 200 volt then this contactor can feed a motor which having a power capacity in hp for three phase motor is 10 hp and this contactor can feed a motor at a voltage of 240 for single phase motor of 5 hp and three phase motor of 10 hp and this same contactor can feed a three phase motor of 20 hp if the voltage is 480 volt and the same contactor can feed a motor of rated capacity 25 hp for three phase motor when the voltage is 600 volt hope you understand this one the other detail which is available on the contactor nameplate is a control circuit type here you can see that there is a coil in the contactor which will be energized when there will be ac source so the control circuit type is ac type because this coil is operating for ac supply only the another detail which is present on the contactor nameplate is a control circuit voltage the voltage required for this coil is 240 220 volt okay some of the coil of the contactor can be operated at ac voltage of 24 volt ac voltage of 48 volt ac voltage of 110 volt but the coil which is used in this contactor will operate at ac volt which having a frequency of 50 hertz and the voltage of 220 volt ac hope you understand this control circuit type and uc control circuit voltage the other detail which is present on the contactor nameplate is auxiliary auxiliary contact composition here you can see that auxiliary contact composition in our contactor there is one no and one nc so here it is clearly mentioned one no and one nc the other detail which will be present on the contactor nameplate is rated impulse with stand voltage u i m p u impulse this is mentioned here as 6 kilo volt this is the voltage coming into the circuit when there is a switching surge and line surge here you can see that the operational voltage is only 690 volt but the impulse voltage is a 6 kilo volt which is very high compared to the operational voltage so this voltage will come into the circuit when there will be lightning surge and switching surge in the circuit and it will be for very fraction of second it will come into the system and it will again drop to the normal value that is called u impulse or, or rated impulse with stand voltage this contactor will be okay till the impulse voltage of 6 kilo volt and if the impulse voltage is more than 6 kilo volt then there is a chances of breaking down of this contactor hope you understand this u impulse the other detail which is present on the contactor nameplate is ith which is air term thermal current which is mentioned as 50 ampere what does it mean here you can see that the 
rated operational current is 38 ampere so what is this rating ATH is a 50 ampere means if this contactor is feeding the resistive load then this contactor can be operational can be used for the load which have a load current of 50 ampere but as this contactor is AC3 type so this can be also used for inductive squirrel cage motor load and this can be used for maximum load of 38 ampere hope you understand this one means for the resistive load is connected with this contactor then the resistive load maximum resistive load can be of 50 ampere but if the inductive squirrel cage motor is connected with the contactor then the maximum full load current of that in induction motor should be 38 ampere hope i'm clear and you got the difference between ith and ie the other detail which is present on the contactor nameplate is a ui voltage that is the rated insulation voltage here in our case the rated insulation voltage ui is given as 690 volt ac might be you will wonder what is the difference between ui and ue as the value of ue and ui is same as i told you earlier the ue is the rated operational voltage and above this voltage the contactor will break or contactor will damage so this is the maximum rated operational voltage and ue is the dielectric voltage which is came into the picture when the manufacturer doing the dielectric test at the factory this voltage can be greater than or equal to the rated operational voltage but never be less than the rated operational voltage so this is the dielectric voltage which is came into the picture when manufacturer doing the dielectric test at the factory hope you understand the difference between ue and ui the other detail which is present on the contactor nameplate is the operating time operating time for opening and operating time for closing when we will give power supply to the coil then the coil will energize and it will pull the moving contact to towards the fixed contact and it will make the circuit the, the time required to make the circuit for this contactor is 12 to 22 millisecond and when we remove the power supply from the coil then the coil will de-energized and it will release the moving contact and it break the circuit so the operating time to break the circuit for this contactor is 4 to 19 millisecond the other detail which is present on the contactor nameplate is IP rating means in grace protection rating for this contactor the IP rating is IP20 and the other detail which is present on the contactor nameplate is the ambient temperature the ambient temperature for this contactor is minus 40 to 60 degree celsius it means this contactor can work properly when this contactor is placed in between minus 40 degree celsius to plus 60 degree celsius hope you got the idea what is contactor what are the major component of the contactor what is the working principle of the contactor and the nameplate detail of the contactor hope you enjoyed this video if you really like my video then please give thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and share with your friends we will meet in any other informative video till then take care keep learning and bye bye thank you so much